Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first Floyd Inside of the School Year. I'm Ethan Edwards. And I'm Sophie Woodard. And let me tell you, Ethan, I am very excited for the three special guests we have today. So am I, Sophie. And our first guest we have here today is Rose Flowers, who's a nearby henna artist. Not every tattoo comes with needles and pain, and henna tattoos are one of those exceptions. Henna has gained traction all over the world due to their intricate designs and the fact that the tattoos aren't permanent. So what exactly is the process of getting a henna tattoo? Artist Rose Flowers shares her expertise on the topic. Starting with good paste, I make my own paste, and then I like to ask uh, individual getting henna sort of what they're wanting. I ask some questions in regards to um, style and preference. Although henna isn't the typical means of tattooing, watching the artist do their work can be mesmerizing. It depends on the artist, but most of them like to draw an outline before applying the tattoo. And don't worry, there are plenty of designs to choose from. Some people like just aesthetics, so flowers or vines, something creative like that. Uh, other people like sort of a jewelry look. A lot of people want marking, so they might want to uh, have henna design that represents healing or family or um, strength. Even though it's not a permanent tattoo, in order to get the best results, you should prepare as if it were. Cleaning the skin around your tattoo is most important. There are also certain things you should be sure to do after getting your henna tattoo. Um, avoid lotions or oils before your henna tattoo, and then um, keep the paste on for as long as possible. There is no definitive answer as to how long your henna tattoo will last, but the majority of tattoos last anywhere from one to two weeks depending on the exposure to soap and water on the area of your tattoo. To book Rose, you can go to her website at bohemianmonkey.com. After seeing that, I'm very excited to see henna done live in person. We have Rose Flowers and our classmate Alea here to do the canvas for Miss Flowers Art. So, um, just a little bit before this, Alea, what were you thinking about getting for today? Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I don't know. I have, I like surprises. Okay, surprises right. are good. Perfect. So we're just going to do a little okay. bit of an interview while you get that going. Sounds good. Do you like things even and balanced, or are you more asymmetrical? Um, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. All right. Well, let's just go at it. Well, how long did it start? How long did it take you to learn how to do henna? Um, I got a book at the library in 2001, and uh, a lot of trials and errors. <laughs> nice. What was this book about that you uh, got? Um, it was a book on henna art, and um, I was interested. And uh, this was before uh, internet and YouTube videos, mm -hmm. and um, so it was a lot of more error. <laughs> yeah. Trials. Had you ever? seen or heard of henna before or was that like uh, no it was uh, something new for me nice and did you learn a lot about the culture i did involved? um henna's been around for thousands of years um most people associate it with india but it's actually probably started in egypt um henna brings down your body temperature so when you put it on your skin it cools you down so we, um, they think it started there people started it to cool themselves off and realize it stained the skin and oh. started to design it. Yeah, because no I mean, yeah. but it's, it's um, blazing hot in those deserts. Yeah, yeah, it's found in the beards of Vikings and the tombs of Egypt, and it uh, went across the Silk Road. So in the Middle Ages, it was extremely popular. Um, uh, Middle Eastern garb was really popular in the uh, during the uh, Renaissance mm -hmm. during the Middle wow. Ages. So it's crazy that it's you know stayed around for that long, and it's still like, I mean, it's still kind of like. An unknown, but yet everybody, I mean, it's henna yeah, art. Yeah, it's henna art. A lot of people know what it is. A lot of people is. know what it is. And whenever people get interested in it, I mean, if I was going to ever get a henna tattoo, I, I mean, I think I'd love it. Mm -hmm. So is there like a specific technique that you use that with henna that's like different from just like regular drawing? Like is there... Um um what goes on like cake icing uh-huh so um so it's actually you're floating on the surface so you're not actually drawing on you're sort of um you uh, i don't know if you can see that you sort of are floating and drawing a line so yeah i'm not actually on her skin um so you have to um sort of uh, move your hand a little differently mm -hmm. move move it a little differently um but as far as um Composition, it's similar to any other art form, painting or drawing or, or, or anything else. So. so what are the actual things like made? What um, is henna made out of? So um, I use uh, ground henna leaves. Uh, henna is a really large 
bush that grows in the Middle East, and they pick it like pea and dry mm -hmm. it and uh, mm -hmm. grind it really fine, and they mix it with sugar, uh, lemon juice, lavender oil, um, other kinds of essential oils, and then it's a um, it's a t um, time process, heat and time. So the warmer it is, the quicker it does a dye release. And then it'll last for so long and then it won't die anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it won't stain anymore. So it's, um, so if you, if I left it out, it would be good for a couple of days. If I put it in the fridge, maybe a week or so, if I put it in the freezer a month. So since it's alive. So if you see uh, someone doing henna and it's a pretty, tube with writing and pictures and mm -hmm. says oh real henna it's actually hair do hair dyes they're chemicals hair dyes it's a black or red it smells like chemicals this i don't know if you can smell that it smells i know i can i'm getting like lavender. whiffs i actually yeah. can't smell it i'm dead it serious really nice. black henna yeah. smells like chemicals mm -hmm. it it is black it's sort of tarry mm -hmm. um and it can uh, uh damage your skin it can burn burn you like any chemical can like when they say put yeah. hair hair dyes in, they say yeah. don't leave it on any longer than a certain period of time because yeah. it can burn yeah. your skin. Same thing. So it's very interesting. That's my uh, it's really very very interesting. Um, so last final question before we kind of like start wrapping things up. Um, any advice to somebody who's really interested in art and wants to get into henna? Any advice for them at all? Um, patience, practice. Um, um, since real henna is, it, it's, um, the leaf is like tea, it's depending on where it grows in the year. So staining different when you mix your henna, it's affected by the weather. So if it's rainy out, your paste is going to be different than if it's dry because sugar and henna both absorb moisture from the air. Mm -hmm. So that can be frustrating. So learning, learning the differences there and then just practicing like anything you become they say you become a, a good at something after a thousand hours invested in it yeah. whether yeah. it's yeah. you know being a reporter mm -hmm. or um doing art or uh, writing a book you invest the time and, and you practice makes better. perfect they yeah. do say yeah. <laughs> practice exactly. makes perfect well Alea, if you could show everybody what you got as a tattoo just a little flower i think it looks absolutely absolutely amazing though yeah that's um, really really was, cool that's Exactly. For the short amount of time that it took, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. And um, at the end of the show, we'll show it off whenever it's all dried off to get a little bit of a better look for everybody else as well. But um, thank you so much oh, for coming on the you. show, um, yeah. showing us your talents, showing us a little bit more about you know what goes into this. If anybody else is interested in getting a henna tattoo, you can check out Bohemian Monkey. They have a website at bohemianmonkey.com. Welcome back to Floyd Insider. The month of September is Suicide Awareness Month and it is the second leading cause of death among people ages 15 to 24, making it an extremely important topic for teenagers to know about. Our school has its very own mental health awareness club that is dedicated to helping students of Floyd Central who are struggling with their mental well-being. With us here today is the president of FC's mental health club, Luke Olmsted. Thank you so much for coming on here, Luke. Thank you for having me. So Luke, what advice do you have for someone who is struggling with their mental health but is afraid to speak out and ask for help? Um, I would tell them that they're not alone in this battle. A lot of other people, whether they show it or not, are struggling maybe with a mental illness or some type of mental health problem. They really, really need to know that there are so many people out there willing to help with different resources and exercises to further help them and make them feel like they belong. Is that kind of what the in the stigma thing is about? Yeah, so there's been kind of a stigma around mental health, um, illnesses and health that it's, people bring it on themselves for attention, that it's fake or it isn't as serious mm -hmm. as people say, which is completely false. But we're currently going through a mental health crisis in our country with our students and everyone. I mean, the pandemic didn't really help with that and it's kind of made things worse, but you know, our kind of goal is to kind of target the different stigmas and different mental illnesses to kind of further bring awareness and resources on that so people aren't sorry to speak out and create more, more advocates for it. Yeah, I've absolutely. heard a lot of, yeah, I've heard a lot of like with the stigma that people are really afraid to speak out because they don't want to seem like they're doing it for attention and all that stuff. So do you know like any coping mechanisms for people who are afraid to reach out but still want to try and like help their well-being, their mental well-being? Well, there are a lot. It kind of depends on the situation. 
But any type of basic coping mechanism, you can always talk to a friend if you need to, someone close in your family, uh, a therapist if you have one or you have access to one. Mm -hmm. But really, you can do little exercises, whether it's physical, maybe you're playing with some type of like fidget toy or just something that can like take your attention towards something else that calms the mind where you can kind of talk about your issues or confide into something. Yeah, yeah. Like, like something that people like to do that can ease their brain out of things, yeah. would you say? Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. yeah. So what are some of our in-school resources for mental health? Well, we have quite a few. We have Ms. Baranu, who is the New Omni Floyd County High School um, social or like uh, mental health counselor. You can email her. She's here, I think, about half the time here at FCE and half at New Omni. Um, you can talk to her, her, make any emails, send her an email, set up an appointment. We have any of the counselors, obviously. Um, you can obviously email them. They can talk to you about stuff, and they can also um, refer you to other sources, resources, and any of that as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on our show. Um, yeah, and we appreciate your advice. Um, anybody out there who is seeking or needing mental health um, coping mechanisms or anybody that you can reach out to, please do not be afraid to reach out and ask for help. But um, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Luke. Thank you for having me. Welcome back to Floyd Insider. Next up on the show, we have our very own 28-time national champions, the Dazzlers, to show us the craft of dancing. Over the last 41 years of being a team, the Floyd Central Dazzlers have brought home 23 Universal Dance Association National Championships and five Dance Team Union National Championships. But who really are the Floyd Central Dazzlers, and what are they all about? We interviewed freshman Phoebe Clay to give us an inside look into the Dazzlers and what it means to be on the team. To be a part of the Dazzlers, you have to commit yourself to something and work hard, but also do it with the people that you love and you care for. Phoebe also told us who they think the Dazzlers are. They're very hardworking people, and they really put them, like, you commit to something and you really do it. You don't just kind of halfway do it. You really do it, and you love doing it. With the end of last year's great season, which included winning the National Dance Association Championship, the Dazzlers are back and ready for this year's season. Phoebe tells us how the Dazzlers are already putting in the hard work to keep their title. We had practices about four times a week for about two and a half hours each practice, and we've been doing training and technique, and we've been having a lot of fun. And with us here today is Senior Dazzler, London Fulkerson. Thank you so much for being here, London. Thank you for having me. So what made you decide to get into Dazzlers? So my parents put me into dance when I was little, and I always saw the Dazzlers at competitions, and I always knew that I wanted to be a part of the team. So I made the switch from private school to public school so that I could get into the Dazzler program. So you just switched schools specifically for the Dazzler? For dance, yeah. I went from a school of about 30 kids in a grade to about 400. Nice. Can yeah. you show wow. us? Can you demonstrate a move for us? Yeah, let's, let's, see. let's see something really let's quick. Something. Let's, I'll try and copy you afterwards. Okay, and oh what God. was that called? <laughs> That's called a pirouette. We usually do about three or four of those. In a row? Yeah. Oh, wow. Do you ever get dizzy? No. Never get How? Dizzy. How do you never get dizzy? Is it because you do it so often, I guess? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so I'm going to give it a go. Hopefully I don't fall over. You got it. And here, you can, you can hold the mic. Thank you. Here we go. All right. Okay. So while he's doing that, what is your favorite aspect of dance? My favorite aspect of dance is that it is like a safe place for everybody on the team. So you always know that you have somewhere to go for two and a half hours a day where you can walk in the door and just forget about all your problems and work towards a goal with people who have the same goal as you. Ethan, how's this dance going? I don't understand how she gets her leg like this. I can't do it. Okay. And now that you're a senior, what are your what are your goals for this season? So obviously to win, but I would say a personal goal for my senior year is to just take in every minute I have left with my teammates. That's very nice, very nice. 
And as far as coaching goes, do you have a good relationship with your coaches and all that stuff? Yeah, so we got a new head coach this year. Her name is Sarah Parker, and we love her. She's the best. Mm -hmm. She always understands what we're going through if we need a day off, and she's always there for us. She's really good. That's great. That's really great. I'm getting the hang of this. <laughs> so, Ethan, why don't you show us? I'm getting us pretty good at this. Hold on. Ready? Let's show us one more final turn. Pirouette. Okay. Pirouette. Pirouette. Oh, wow. Wow. Nice. I can make the team. Yeah, really good. I'm just saying, I, th I, I think I can make the team. Mm -hmm. I think I can make the team with those moves. Um, <sighs> anyways, I'm hot and sweaty as crap now. That takes a lot out of me. How often? How long do you guys do practice normally? So usually for two and a half hours every day, but we sometimes have weekends where it'll be 10 hours a day for the whole weekend, or during like a fall break or a winter break, we'll have like eight hours of practice So like with students who have jobs, do they have to schedule around dance? Like does, is dance the number one priority and then it's job, school work, home life? Yeah. yeah, so most people don't have a job because we practice so much. But those who do, they usually just work Sundays for like a few hours. Um, but usually our priority list is school. School always comes first and then dance. Right. Wow. Well, anyways, London, thank you so much for coming on the show, uh, giving us a little bit of a demonstration. I could see why we're 28-time champions whenever I can't even do a single thing. Um, <laughs> however, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. The Dazzlers are an incredibly talented group, and we're lucky to have them represent our school. For more information on the team, you can visit their Instagram at FC Dazzlers, or you can find their Facebook at, FC, at Floyd Central Dazzlers as well. With special thanks to our guests, Rose Flowers, Luke Olmsted, and London Fulkerson. This has been Floyd Insider. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. us.